the um, uh, Mars One people are, you know, banking on basically is that you know if if you could get enough capital together to pay a large aerospace company like Lockheed Martin or Northrop Grumman or you know some of these, um, they would be able to figure out a way to do it and and get you there. I think what they're counting on is that you know, enough people will eventually think that this is a good enough idea and recognize that there are enough resources, you know, collectively in the world to actually go and do this. And so in that respect, you know, it could happen. If we were able to and willing to invest the money, could we then do it? I do believe that they're engineering problems rather than fundamental scientific Barriers. It's possible to do a manned mission of some kind in the relatively near future. Um, uh, the question for me more is not one of can we do it just as a sort of in principle thing. I, I think it's more to do with what's it leading to, what's the next step. At some point during the trip, you can no longer see Earth anymore. Yet, you still can't see Mars. During this period, you're just literally in the void. I can't really wait to be living in this period. One of the things that I loved about the Native Americans is every decision they made, they would think how it affected you know, people seven generations out. That's a beautiful way to live. That's what I would think a spacefaring civilization would have to think. If we believe that the last 3.5 billion years of evolution of life on Earth has resulted in something that we consider beautiful enough to be worth saving, then we need to keep dreaming. I think we're on the verge of a renaissance of, of evolution that we have no idea about yet. I don't think love is going to change. I don't think that the energy of love, whatever it is, will change for us as humans. You know, it's been there since, I don't know, <laughs> the beginning of us, and I'm sure it'll be there at the end of us. Sue Ann and Cynthia. We're getting married. We are, and we're two girls, guys. It's not only something that will happen, but it's actually a necessity that we uh, continue to dream and expand our horizons further. And what's further than our horizons now is really uh, moving our location from Earth into Mars. It would be absolutely awesome if our daughter was the first person to land on Mars. <laughs> I feel quite awestruck by the prospect that that could be I mean, how, how more proud could you be that she's chosen to be the first person to step onto another planet? That cause is very good for the whole world. My daughter is giving something to that mission. I feel proud of that, but it's very painful for me. If we are not growing, then we're contracting, shrinking. We want to, you know, uh, go and see uh, what the world, what, what everything is like. Exploration has been always etched in the minds of people. A newborn can see a few inches from his eyes, and an adult can see the stars that are light years away. Reaching Mars will be uh, another birthday for humanity.